Hello there and welcome back to the studio. We now have another canvas. This is again a blank canvas, but unlike the previous uh, videos that we've been, uh, you know, posting, this one is going to contain both head, shoulders, and we're going to make it all the way down to hands. So this is an 18 by 24 inch cotton canvas that has been pre-toned with oil paint. And if you're curious as to what this color is, I can't really tell you specifically. It was just a bunch of the colors that I had on my palette. I mixed them all up with my palette knife one day, and then just with a little bit of mineral spirits, just like a little kind of a tone. And that's all I did with that. Now I'm going to try to keep this segment of the video at about 30 minutes or maybe a little bit more. So let's go ahead and move through the simple shapes and proportions very quickly. So this is just odorless mineral spirits and I'm just going to be using titanium white, burnt umber and neo McGilp medium. So I'm just going to use a little bit of burnt umber on one brush, put that brush aside. And another brush, I'm going to put the mineral spirits, a little bit of medium and the titanium white. So I'm going to be working with both and you'll see how we're going to work with the basic shapes. And before we get started, here is an image of our model Madeline. I hope I can pronounce that correctly. So you're going to have, you're going to, excuse me, you're going to have an image of her to the top left corner of your screen right there. And again, keep in mind, this is a larger canvas. That's why you don't see the palette on the side. And that's why the image might look a little skewed because the camera is at an angle with respect to uh, the canvas just so I don't block the footage. So what I'm going to have just off camera here is another brush, preferably one that's a little more worn down. And just a little bit of mineral spirits into this brush. This is going to be our kind of our eraser brush, but we're not going to be doing too much erasing. But I just wanted to have an eraser brush on hand. So we're going to look at simple shape. So again, where do I want the top of the head to fall? So again, it's going to be, I don't know, somewhere around here. Maybe that's the back of the hair. And um, the hands are going to be very important where I want to place the hands. I know I've had many suggestions to do hands. And so I figure I might as well just, you know, do a head, shoulders, down to hands painting. So if the hands are going to fall somewhere about here, I'm thinking of the basic proportion. But the first proportion I'm thinking of is not the proportions of the model, but rather the proportions uh, of the shapes, the shapes within with respect to the outer shape, the outside rectangle of the canvas. So very simply here, just with the burnt umber, I'm going to say maybe that her shoulders are going to fall somewhere about here give or take. Now again, we're going to be working with very simple shapes. And the idea here is that no one cares how you start. No one's going to care about the stuff that happened before the final image. Everyone's just going to see the final result. Just keep that in mind. No one cares how you started that painting. No one's going to care about that. Everyone's going to care what you show them once you call it so-called finished in quotation marks. So the legs are going to be somewhere over here and the back side of the other leg is going to be here. Here we're going to have a division between the legs. And this is a very simple pose. Here's the chair right there. And you know, the key term is I'm basically kind of just going by, you know, going by eye with each one of these shapes. And again, I'm not terribly worried about the proportions just yet. We're going to get there. Don't worry. I know that this video is very much about simple proportions and all that, but first you need to take note of the entire picture. And I'm already going to say that, yeah, there's a little bit of a shadow going on this side and that's it. That's going to be my basic overall shape. This is the most important stage because if you don't have a fairly confident, if you're not confident about your composition, what's in the first few minutes, or at least do a preliminary sketch before you get into a more involved painting. You're just, you're not going to have a good day. So it's important to have an idea of the, the big picture at hand here. So now we're going to go into a subdivision of shape. So now proportion is going to be kind of a thing. So I'll tell you what, the model is in a very basic pose. So here's a very simple canon of proportions you can use. Top of the head to the chin, drop that down. That should equal about the chest. And it basically does. 
So just by eye here, we've already established a very simple proportion. I will talk a little bit about photographic distortion. There is a little bit of photographic distortion. I tried to do the best that I could with this photo reference, but uh, if you notice the model's head is a little bit larger, I would say that the camera fish eyed her. I'm not an expert in photography, but I do think that there's some kind of distortion going on with the model's head. It shouldn't be quite that big. Now, I, I met this model in person, so I, I know what her proportions are like, uh, basically, you know, working from life. So it's important to have a balance between working from photo reference and working from life. I don't think you should solely work from photograph, though you could solely work from life. So again, the backside of the chin, and we're gonna keep this so simple. So let's go ahead and put in the dark shape of the hair now. And again, you really wanna keep this simple and easy and very workable and fun. The important thing is to keep this fun for you. You know, if you're someone that likes to take a long time carefully tracing out every single outline, good for you. But, you know, it all depends on everyone's personalities. But I tell you what, this style of working is a very classical, a very tried and true kind of method. So let's get that eraser brush now. It won't really erase that much. See that? It, it doesn't, it's not really an eraser. Rather, it just kind of shovels the paint around. And for your start, if you're going to start like this, this is a very simple and basic way to start. I would suggest you use a cotton canvas or a linen canvas. I wouldn't try to start like this on a panel. The paint would just be slipping everywhere. And um, I did tone it with oil paint. So if you're going to work on a cotton canvas, I think that the best thing to do would be to work on an oil tone. Now I did use acrylic for the previous ones. Um, you know, like the video that I just, or the painting I just finished up uh, yesterday, but it's just not really the best and you want to have the best. Painting's hard enough, especially if you don't have the right materials. Like if you're using artist grade material or, or something like that, excuse me, just, just no, just get the artist grade. If you're using student grade, that is, excuse me. Okay, enough rambling. So the proportion, Top of the head, down to the chin, this is a measurement. This is a proportion. Remember, proportion is a relation between shape. Top of the head, roughly down to chin, equals chest. We're good. Now here's another measurement we can make optically. Turn this over so you can not only just relate verticals, but horizontals. So now let's turn this over. And I'm gonna do the same thing looking at the photo reference. You're probably just seeing my hand off to the side. Here, let me just show you how I do this. Okay, so now you're seeing the model on my TV screen. So here is how I make this measurement here. So top of the head, I know the autofocus is not working, but actually, you know, the autofocus might actually help. So let's double check these proportions. Remember, proportion is a relation. Top of the head to the chin, move down, equals the chest. See that? Roughly equals the chest. But now we can do a uh, vertical to horizontal. So top of the head down to the chin, turn it over, drop. See that? drop. It equals roughly there, the corner of the elbow. But again, there's a little bit of photographic distortion, so I will make the model's head a little bit tinier. And now that I'm here, let's see if I can fix the uh, autofocus, just so you don't have to see the thing constantly focusing on my hand. See, now I fixed the autofocus. Hopefully it stays like that. So these are the points that we want to relate here to here. Bring that down here to here. But now let's do that measurement that uh, we just did with the TV screen. See, dropping it down. See that? The elbow can move to there, a little bit further out there. So let's do that one more time. And remember, proportion is a relation. There you go. And again, these are all basically, you know, these are optical measurements. There, there's nothing, there, there's no, how do I put it? There are no calipers out here or anything like that. Like I did in my previous videos, now I'm trying to work with much more freedom. And I think that it's important to have a balance between, uh, you know, finite measuring, like what we just did, like physically measuring something, and just optically, just feeling out the shapes. Because oil paint, you know, it has this property. Now I'm gonna actually fill in the rest of this dark mass here, so. And I'm just looking at mass. And if you're new to painting, 
and you don't know what the term mass means, a mass is simply this, it's simply a shape. And simple shape is the key. And being able to see shape. And so what was I getting at? If you're a, um, you know, a beginner in oil painting, it's important to really, you know, find a way to work that, that you enjoy. I cannot stress this enough. If you dwell too much on measuring, if you, you know, if you, you let it bother you throughout the day, like I used to in the past, it would just, it would eat you up. Painting just won't be fun, especially portrait painting. But again, enough rambling. So now I'm going to fill in this little dark shape for where the, uh, the clothing is going to fit. And, um, and there are these little holes in her outfit. I'm not sure what you would call those. I'm not really much of a fashion person, um, but I'm assuming that those little holes that you're seeing here are for fashion, unless they're like ventilation or something. I, I don't know, but I'm gonna ignore them for now. Just filling in. And the way that I'm getting the paint to be a little more fluid, a little more runny, is by adding the a little bit of odorless mineral spirits, and I'm probably even adding too much, I will admit, probably too much odorless mineral spirits. Now, elbow to elbow, I think I made this mark earlier, but right here, this, I'm gonna just hold up my brush from here to there, and just feeling out the shapes, because what's more important is this point here, these, these points uh, for the hands. I don't want the hands to move that much. And I did say that I wasn't going to make the model's uh, head quite as large as the photograph makes it. Uh, but again, portrait, you know, portrait's the story of how a bunch of tiny things either made my day or ruined my day. So when I say that I'm going to make the head a little bit smaller than the photo reference, I mean a little bit, like tiny, tiny, tiny. Maybe down to there would be fine, I don't know. Now we know that this measurement works pretty well with respect to the photograph, and the photograph does give us this proportion here to here is here to here. So why am I saying that the head is a little bit bigger? And to be honest, that's pretty much my intuition. Maybe I should put my intuition away right now and just be a little bit more analytical. So as long as this point, sorry, this distance is equal to this distance, our chest is somewhere over here. Hopefully I don't get demonetized for this. So as long as these points are working, we should be good to go. But again, this is how you work with freedom. Just put the paint down. It's not gonna hurt you. Try to see like that as simply as possible. Now I do have the titanium white on my palette, but I don't think I'm gonna use it just yet. I'm gonna try to keep it in this form for as long as possible. Now I do see that the elbow could possibly come down a little bit lower. You know, the back of the rib cage is gonna be somewhere about here. You know, the 12th of rib is gonna be down here. We have the center line of the figure going down this way, so she's kind of leaning back. So it's important to have an idea of some of the anatomical things. So we have like clavicle here, suprasternal notch here, from one clavicle to the other. This is how we construct the figure, even though, you know, the model is wearing clothing. We can still imagine the anatomical significance of each one of these shapes. So now, just like the previous uh, videos, I know this might be kind of an ambitious thing to do, but I'm gonna try to show you every single clip or all the footage involved in this painting. Uh, just, just bear in mind, this one may take quite a bit longer, so I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to uh, you know, divide the length of each video. Initially, I thought 30 minutes, um, but that, might extend a little bit longer. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Let's just focus on the painting right now. 
So the jeans are going all the way up here. And again, I guess that's um, a style thing. So let's push that down here. Leg is over here. So I think I might be showing a little bit too much of the leg down here. I'm not sure. There's going to be that little cushion that the model's resting on. And this dark shape over here. Excuse that sound. But we're just putting in a simple shape. Now where is the model's hand going to lie? I guess somewhere right here. So I can also use vertical. So from here to here. Roughly, again, dropping a measurement here. The hand is going to have to move a little bit. Let's say down to about there. And um, let's see. Again, it's important to be able to reason with the shapes. Doesn't matter what anything looks like at this stage. Right now, it's really about gathering the right information that you need and knowing what you're looking for. Portrait is hard. The hands. So I'm using the eraser brush to help draw out the hands. And uh, just for a little terminology, I've heard this technique referred to as open grisaille. So grisaille, remember, that just means, I think that means like gray or something in French, but um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, which I probably am. But uh, this is referred to as an open grisaille, basically an open underpainting, where you don't really fill in the lights just yet. I'm going to get a clean brush to just push that over. So again, this is a little bit about paint handling too. It's important to know how to handle the oil paint. And it's okay, see that, how it's kind of dripping down there? That doesn't matter. What the Fingers don't matter. Details don't matter. Eyelids, eyelash, all that stuff. None of that stuff matters. It's useless to us right now. What's important is to know where all of these shapes are going to fit in large relations. Sounds simple, but it is one of the most difficult things that we encounter, especially with portrait. So again, I'm trying to look at each point. So the corner of the uh, the clavicle, so this is the clavicle, uh, I forgot what this is called, but here's the corner of the elbow, right? So one point down to here, down to the elbow. So this point to this point must have a relation that is, this point to this point is some length in relation to this point to this point. They are almost equal, but I would say that this point to this point may need to be a little bit larger optically. So I'm gonna push this back. And when I mean larger, I mean very, very small, very, very tiny. So again, relating basically this whole mass here. I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm going to simplify those genes I have been kind of ignoring them for quite a while. It may be that I might have to elongate everything. So let's just do that with the, um, this is why I say keep your shapes simple and easy. Again, so this is the, um, whatchamacallit, this is the whatchamacallit brush. This is the brush with the um, mineral spirits. And I'm gonna use the entire thing to my advantage. Again, this is also about paint handling. So again, this is, a way that you can uh, basically optimize what information you can put down by you know minimizing how many brush strokes are showing and optimizing the specificity within those brush strokes but again it's not really about copying it may seem that way and again there's a fine line between trying to copy what you're looking at and uh, you know visually interpreting it so if we're gonna move all of this down, let's be sure to know where we're going to move it to. So I'm gonna say that the hand where it was before is now going to go here. And this is why I usually edit some things out in my, uh, why I did that with my older videos, just because this is uh, our noodling. Basically we're noodling, like we're trying to, uh, you know, guesstimate where each one of these shapes are going to fit. And I don't want anything too specific for the hands just yet. I just want to make sure that none of these proportions are too far out of whack. And if they are, whatever. It's 
simple shape, we're going to be able to come back in with you know the values and the colors and correct it. It's important to know what we're looking for and what we're looking for is not any kind of color, no detail, um, none of that stuff. We don't even have to have the perfect finished outline. Um, what we want is an idea of the composition. We want a composition that's solid, a composition that will inspire us to continue to, to work. Okay, that's what I was missing. So this is actually uh, deceiving because the pants are like, I don't know, whatever the style is, the pants are like all the way up there. I need to now relate these points. Okay, so this is how you construct a figure. Clavicles, these two points of the clavicles connect to uh, these bones over here. Let's not worry about the fancy names. So there's a point here, point here. Even though you can't really see it, this is a very important anatomical landmark. So we're imagining the entire rib cage down here and all of the surface anatomy is going to be fitting right on top of all of this stuff. Don't just look at it as a curb. It's not just merely a curve that is on a cylinder or anything like that. There is some important anatomical information going on here, even though you know we can't really see it. So this point here would be kind of the center of the rib cage. Down here, these two points here would be the twelfth ribs. This is the olecranon, so this is a part of the uh, elbow. Relating this point to this point is going to be very important. Now relating the olecranon, the elbow, to the wrist. Now, the important thing is to be able to make these decisions via simple shape. And don't get too caught up with, oh, well, I think that that shape looked pretty. I don't want to move it. No, don't do that. Just, just don't do that to yourself. Just don't. Okay, so now, what was I talking about? So now, continuing on down here, we're going to reach the pelvis. So the super, uh, what you might call it, the, uh, the an anatomical stuff that's slipping my mind, anterior superior iliac crests. So the two points of the, uh, don't worry about the name, I probably just butchered that, but the pelvis, one point of the pelvis, the other point there. Think about it as kind of like a little pelvis is almost like a butterfly. But right now, a point here to a point here is what I'm looking at. And it's very, very hard to see because, again, the model is wearing the, the clothing that is kind of distracting. So if the pelvis goes down here, the hand is almost on the pelvis in the drawing, which is erroneous. It's wrong. The hands need to be moved. So again, cutting all that back, we are going to construct the figure. So again, there's definitely going to be some anatomical stuff that we're going to want to look for. So you can also look for where the belly button would be, it would probably be somewhere there. Anyway, continuing down here, where does the pelvis fall? I'd say the pelvis probably falls somewhere about here and the leg starts to emerge. See that? And if it's wrong, it's wrong, whatever, so be it. As long as we are relating the shapes, relating something concrete. And so the abdomen would be actually in perspective, tilting backwards in some kind of way. So again, this is gonna, definitely gonna be some anatomical stuff. So again, if the belly button's here, the 12th ribs are here, we're following this center line all the way down towards where the pelvis is, and we're looking at the angles between the anterior superior iliac uh, spine the crest, whatever, the two points of the pelvis, here and here. Remember, a line is a pathway between two points, and a line has a specific angle or relation to the corner of your canvas, which gives you an angle. So again, the angle between the pelvis, I, I think it's like this, okay? I think it's like that, but enough of that stuff. So if this is where the, um, the bottom of the pelvis is going to fit, we can now objectively say that the hands aren't going to be right on the pelvis. They just won't. The hands are actually on the model's left leg here. So there's a lot of moving going on with these shapes, a lot of movement based on the anatomical structures. Now if I'm going to have to move that, I'm going to have to very carefully now look at the dimensions for the head. So again, I'm going to move that ever so slightly, ever so slightly that way. 
just so that these shapes relate to one another. Now just going to subtract a little bit of light with the, um, the eraser brush. One thing you want to do is if it's not really subtracting that much, again, this is another paint handling thing. So now I'm just getting out my paper towel and that's how I'm going to treat the hands. That simple. So if the pelvis is here, uh, so that corner of the pelvis is here, there we go. can guarantee you, not really guarantee you, but I can suppose that this is very much how the old masters would have worked. Looking for the anatomical structures and then making these decisions based off of, you know, not just what they're looking at, but their knowledge of the anatomy. The anatomy is going to be very important for this. Especially when you have something more than head and shoulders. You know, the majority of our videos just head and shoulders. This contains a little bit more intricacies. And I didn't realize how complicated this pose was with her pelvis being, you know, tipped over. Think about it like a cereal box. If I'm leaning over a cereal box, that's going to be basically the pelvis leaning this way. The rib cage is going to be another cereal box leaning in a different direction. Didn't know getting into this how complicated this would be, but it is nice to be able to finally talk to you a little bit about how to construct a figure. All right, so now with the, um, the what you might call it brush. So the brush with the mineral spirits, I'm just going to uh, subtract a little bit here. And I think we're closing in on the basic proportions. And then we're going to move into a uh, more simple shape in just a little bit. All right, I think we're going to finish up here pretty quickly now. I think we are going to be approaching the 30 minute mark pretty soon. So, um, the important thing, again, is to keep everything simple, easy, and workable. But let's go into a little bit more of how the anatomical stuff influences the construction of the figure. Because I think this is the first time I'm really getting into the uh, figurative aspect of things. So again, top of the head to the chin. Those are two points that can relate. Drop it down, you get the chest. Chest is right here. Now then, turn this over, go down. It gives you the corner of the elbow, the olecranon. I think that's what that's called. Um, now forgive me for my <laughs> lack, lack of uh, specificity in my anatomical terms, but I can describe you how things relate in terms of simple points. Now then, you want to think about perspective a little bit. Notice how these angles. This angle has a specific relation with respect to this one. This one is a little more out. This one is a little more like straight. And we have these, the center line here. So from the center of the clavicle, this is a supersternal notch. Follow all the way down to the midpoint of the ribs. There is a name for a bone here. I just can't remember it. But anyway, this is gonna be the center of the, the ribs. Follow this all the way down and we get the 12th rib on one side, the other side. Think about this spatially as like a box. It's like a cereal box that's leaned forward more, whereas the pelvic region down here and even the abdomen is leaned forward a little bit more. Didn't realize how much I would talk about anatomy in this one. But anyway, so now let's just look at even more simple shape. We're gonna to start to subdivide the shapes now. So that is the corner of the mandible. Let's follow around the side there. You know, it doesn't need to be this tight. It doesn't need to be this sharp. You know, we can let some of the brush strokes show through and things like that. It's okay. And now with the last, I think, last minute or so that we have uh, for today's uh, segment of this video, I'm just going to, again, emphasize that it's important to think about the overall design of the picture, and that's paramount. That's much more important than the actual proportion of the picture. The proportion of the inner shapes in relation to the outer shape of your canvas, that is going to be much more important for you because you're gonna to wanna to be inspired, you're gonna to wanna to be motivated to come back to these paintings. Portrait paintings, 
figure paintings are no joke. They're definitely much more difficult. It's not like in a landscape. You can't just move a tree and say, oh, I'll just move the tree over here and needs a friend or whatever. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Bob Ross and all that stuff. I do want to do landscape painting, but I will say that spending your time in this part of the development of the painting, the simple composition, proportion, and even anatomical construction, that's going to help you so much. That being said, I really hope that today's segment of this video helps you out. I'll be back again with another segment very soon.